grave and has conquered death. Jesus said, I have conquered death and so shall you. Jesus said, I have rose from the dead and so shall you. Do you know the meaning of these words? Pay close attention. He has conquered death and so shall you. That means you will not die. You will not die. That second death. I'm not talking about that first death. I'm talking about the second death when you're doomed to damnation and you face the decimation of this wicked nation. And now that second death. Jesus said, I have rose from the dead and so shall you. That means you will be wrapped up with him when he comes for his church. When he comes for his church. There's nothing, there's nothing that Jesus can do. Amen. Jesus loved us so much that yet while we were still sinners, he died on the cross. Yet while we were still sinners and sinners, he died on that cross for us. He died on that cross so that our souls would not be lost. He set us free. He gave us the victory. He snatched us from that evil grass for Satan. He opened our eyes and showed us the mistakes we were making. He set us free. And he made us complete. And he conquered the enemy's head of the day with our feet. And now, right about it, yes, you have that power when you walk with Jesus. Amen. your full potential with Jesus to know how much authority and power you have. Amen. And the only way to do that is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. And you will know how much power you have to overcome anything in this world. Anything. Does you mean anything? Yes. Everything. Amen. When Satan throws those fiery darts at you, you be like, <laughs> stop tickling me, Satan. <laughs> I have the armor of God on me. <laughs> stop it coming out. And he will leave you and seek him out and make your power, but it's not going to be you because you have Jesus' power every minute, every day, and yet every hour. There's nothing that he can't do for you. There's nothing he can't and won't do for you. The thing is, it's a two-way commitment. It's a two-way commitment. We've got to accept him and be covered by His blood so that He can do His work in you. Amen. So that He can do His work. He knows you to do the mighty will of the mighty Savior of Christ that you are destined to do. Everybody has a will for their lives. God the Father has a will for your life. And you will. But it's up to you. It's up to you to accept what God has for you in your life and to follow through on it. A lot of people just believe that they don't want to receive. Sure, I believe that I'm not walking in Christ. I'm still living in my sin. So it's easy to say, easy to say I believe. But you gotta act on your belief. You gotta act on your belief. Amen. If I'm at my job and my supervisor calls me to the office and he says, Lewis, you've been doing a bang up job lately. I'm going to give you a raise. I believe that I deserve it. I also believe that I'm going to work harder and harder so that I can be the CEO one day. Amen. I'm acting on my belief. I'm going to be the CEO of this company. I'm getting promoted and promoted. So I'm going to believe that I'm going to receive. 
And I'm going to believe that I can, I can do what God has according to me to do. And then, that's when you put God's plan into action. When you follow through and you walk on His word. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. Just a game. Come on, fire lady. Party bottom, this is the fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, I'm party bottom. I'm not going to go either way. Go back and forth. All right, I'm going with it now. Come on, Sister Joe. Let God be bottomed up with the Holy Spirit and the light of Jesus. Am I right about it? I tell you what we're going to do. What are going to do? Joe, you say this year. You're going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, I'm over there. Yeah. Okay, so when I'm finished over there. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us praise the Lord this afternoon. Tell you about them. This is the day that the Lord has led. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Not because you got money, or you have a car, or you have a house. You must be glad that the God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. His name is Jesus Christ. To shed His precious blood for a wretched sin, sinner like me and like you. That's what we must be glad about. We must rejoice that one day that Jesus Christ said in His Word, I must go so that the comfort that to come. And I must go to prepare a place for you. And you. And you. He goes to prepare a place for us. That wherever he is, we will be also. But as evangelists, we all are getting ready for the coming of the Son of God one more time. Our Savior Jesus Christ. He is strong in battle. He is strong in victory. Jesus overcomes death. He rolled the sword of the king. Then he had rest him in, and he come up victorious, so that his blood could shed, his blood could save us. I am so happy that Jesus Christ answered the calling of his Father. And I am so happy oh. that the Father has sent his Son to die for a wretch like me. Today God is saved. Satan, I will find you in the name of Jesus. I find it, Satan, and leave this man. Today we must rejoice and be happy that Jesus Christ is coming again. But when Jesus comes, are you ready to go home? When Jesus comes, one more time, are you ready to come home? Are you washing your garments? Are you washing your soul? Are you coming back home to say yes to Jesus Christ? Jesus gave us salvation. And salvation was not bought by money or by your mom bringing you into the world. Salvation was bought and paid by Jesus Christ's precious blood. Are you willing? to come back to the Lord today. For we're living in a perilous time when men are lovers of their own self and haters of God. As I'm standing out here this afternoon, 
I see the evangelist is preaching the word and not even one person will stop and inquire about the kingdom of heaven. Men love darkness more than light. Yes, you are walking in darkness. I'm telling you, you are spiritually dead. You are dead man walking. Yes, because if you don't have the Savior, Jesus Christ is the inside of you. You are a walking dead. Just waiting for the time to sleep, to fall and sleep the sleep of death. Are you getting ready to come back? You see, salvation is not for when you're dead. Salvation is for every one of you all while you are alive. Salvation is for the living and not the dead. And many, many billions upon billions upon billions people have died. And when they die, they ask Jesus for a second time to come back and repent of their sin. This is wrong. Because as we are speaking out here, people are dying in hell, burning, burning hell fire. Babies are burning up in hell fire. Mothers and fathers are burning in hell fire and asking God to give them a chance to come back to repent. But it's too late. To let the be a Christ when the spirit of death come at you. There will be no second chance. When God sent the spirit of death, you can be as young as you are. You can be as handsome as you are. When death takes you, you did not have time to say goodbye. You of life, to be in the land of the living, to repent. Why don't you come back home today? Come back to Jesus. You might be young, but death touch the young and the old. You might be beautiful, but death touch the ugly, as you say, and the beautiful. God is calling you. This is a generation of rebellious people. You all have rebellious people. You rebellious. God is telling you today, if America does not come back to the place that of worship, God is telling you that God said that He will move America, He will shake America. God will raise up another nation that wants to worship Him. God will raise up a small nation that will humble their stand before God. Where will you go? You will have no money because God will take all the money, the resources from America and put it in a land that wants to worship and serve Him today. God is all about worship. All God wants from you is worship. He wants your obedience. He don't want you to put up skyscrapers. He don't want your sacrifice. God already sent His Son Jesus Christ to do the ultimate sacrifice, the blood sacrifice. Jesus Christ is the Lamb that slain. He is the Lamb that slain. Why don't you come back to Him? Come back to Jesus Christ. Turn away from the homosexuality. God put men on this land to be leaders. God put men 
कपिल लीरा 